Hi, Michelle. Hi. You wanted to talk about the Rorschach test? Yes. Your biographers write that you had a lifelong fascination with it. Apparently, you got the equipment for conducting the Rorschach shortly after your final university degree. Until the 1960s, you even gave courses about it. That's true. After my degree in philosophy, I had gotten an additional diploma in psychology. Very quickly, I was fascinated with all kinds of psychological tests and diagnostic tools. In particular, this one, where the test subject is asked to respond to a series of cards showing ink plots by freely offering her or his associations. In contrast to the talking cure of psychoanalysis, the responses are carefully noted and calculated. Yep. There is an entire coding system that you have to learn. In general, the emphasis is not so much on the content of the responses, but on their formal aspects. For example, whether or not the test person takes into account the entire picture or specific details, or if colors are mentioned. Reaction time is also a factor in this. Uh, sounds complicated indeed. And reminds me of the disciplinary practices you describe in your later work. That's a good point. But you know what? I always enjoyed performing these tests on my friends and colleagues, even on my students. I pretended the Rorschach would allow me to know what's on their mind. Why did you pick the Rorschach? For obtaining this goal, you could have used any psychological test. In 1950s France, the Rorschach played a very important role in bridging the fields of psychiatry, psychoanalysis and philosophy. The key point was the question of the image, something I was always interested in. In addition, I was friends with Jacqueline Verdot, who happened to put me in touch with people that dealt with or were interested in the Rorschach. In Paris, for example, the psychiatrist André Ambredamne and the philosopher Gaston Bachelard. In Switzerland, psychiatrists such as Roland Kuhn and uh, Ludwig Pinswanger. Mm, I recall that in 1950, for in your very first book, Mental Illness and Personality, you talk about Kuhn and Binswanger. When discussing a paranoid psychotic, the question of image is crucial. Each face, face whether strange or familiar, is merely a mask, the mask of the persecutor. Exactly. The shapes depicted on the Rorschach plates are often perceived as masks. Kuhn had discussed this phenomenon in a book that Jacqueline translated and to which Bachelard contributed the preface. Oh, by the way, on one of our trips to Switzerland, Jacqueline and I went through a very special experience. Um, at Kuhn's clinic in Münsterlingen. It was during the carnival season and the entire city was full of masked people. Now, all the patients and the psychiatrists of Kuhn's clinic would also dress up, carry masks and mingle with the inhabitants. However, thinking of masks is only one possible response to the Rorschach plates. I feel myself more inclined to see animals, for example, bats. Yes, other test subjects also recognize humans. For example, ear. 
two waiters or stewards who are also often seen as two chimpanzees or as a mirrored punch. Which leads us back to the puppet theme and the question of doubling. What do you mean? As Deleuze was saying, the theme that has always haunted you is that of the double. Yeah, but in the Rorschach, the doubling is simply a result of the way in which the inkblot images were created, namely by folding the paper. Or, to be more precise, by drawing images that look like as if they resulted from putting ink onto a sheet of paper and then folding it. But this is precisely what Deleuze meant, that the double is never a projection of the interior, but an interiorization of the outside. Uh, hold on a second. The Rorschach test became world famous as a projective test. Because the test person is asked, and rather successfully so, to project her or his interior thoughts onto the plates. Sure, but we are not talking here about the test subject. We are dealing with the one who is conducting the test, in this case yourself. So you become your own double by interiorizing uh, the outside based on your psychological interest in your friends and colleagues, your historical work and all of your writing. This then might also be the reason why I was re-embodied as a puppet, as a mask, as it were, that is placed right next to the face of the real Foucault, like the two symmetrical parts of a Rorschach plate. The Foucault diagram created by Deleuze also looks like some Rorschach plate. I was rather struck by the fact that the central part of it is named fold and zone of subjectivation. If I get this right, this then would mean that only through my existence as a puppet or double I am becoming a subject but it could also suggest that in this way I am turned into the ultimate projection screen for everything and nothing. I have to think about it. Not sure if this helps but Deleuze claims that to think is to fold. See you around. See you. <laughs>